What's up, y'all? My name is Kayla, and this is Growing to Get Her Together. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're not new here, welcome back. All right, we are on episode four today, and I'm excited. I always say I'm excited because I am. Anytime it comes to producing, giving out what God has given me, it's always exciting to see it go from thought to just into video or into concept, whatever it is he has given me, okay? So like I said, this is our fourth episode. If you're new here, go check out the other three. What are you doing? And do not hit, forget to hit subscribe, all right? So today... We're going to talk about something that is so commonly said, but it's like, do you really mean it? All right. How many of us have said, yeah, I don't have any regrets. I don't, I don't have regrets. And it's like, really? I've always been one of those really tight when someone said, I don't have a regret. Why don't you have a regret? I just felt like you should, as a person, have some regrets without even knowing the context in which we're about to go forward. Story time. So I was having a conversation with someone close to me and we were talking about regrets and the person said, yeah, I don't have any regrets. And I was like, you don't? And I was like, I had just happened to look up the definition a few days ago of the word regret, right? And so I had shared with them, I was like, everyone should have regret, especially if you're a believer. So yes, we are going to root ourselves in that today. We are going to jump right in, no time wasted because I've been away for a minute, unintentionally unintentionally took the time and space with some great things going on some new stuff going on that you'll see okay um that will be uploaded to the channel but again unintentionally took time but i'm back and we're growing still we're still growing growth is happening daily okay like the pursuit is real honey all right and that's the exciting part about that's what i love like about this platform god gave us is that there's room there's there's room to feel like i don't have to have it all figured out i can actually grow in this right like i could be a student to life turn teacher in certain areas right like i have room to to grow to evolve and that's the beautiful part about this platform that god has given us that um it breaks the conception of i have to have it figured out i have to step into perfection i have to step in into a certain amount of knowing that actually yeah yeah you don't you could let the holy spirit be your guide we can lay seeds we can water them we can nurture them right put give them all their foundational sunlight and all that beautifulness and then grow in those areas right but understand that it's a process so that's what i love 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 about this okay but back to regret because that's what today is. Today's title is Good to Regret. It is good to regret. And let me tell you why. All right. Because I know I kind of went off, but I, it was necessary. So like I was saying, I had looked up the definition and I had shared it with the person I was speaking with. I was like, well, you know, it is actually good to regret. And I'm going to back it up. I'm going to back it up. So the definition of regret. To feel sad. To repent. Doesn't the word tell us to repent? Aren't we to repent? We're going to Google what does repent mean, all right? So feel sad, repent, or disappointed over something that has happened or been done, especially a loss or missed opportunity. If you say truthfully you you don't have regrets, why not? Why not as a believer? When I sin and I knowingly sin, unknowingly, I don't feel happy. I don't feel like, yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm good. It was a learning lesson. I'm all straight on that. No, I feel sad. I'm like, man, you know, I I don't like that I did that. And it's in that place that you can t- that you begin to turn from those waves that you begin to evolve out of that. So so it is good to regret because it's in that that you get those adjustments, right? Where you get those moments of not feeling like yeah, I did it, and it's a done deal. It's in that place that you turn towards repentance, right? So let's Google the definition of repentance. Okay, so the definition is the act of repenting sincere regret or remorse. So we should be remorseful. You should be remorseful, but we're not staying in that, right? Because we're not here. God does not want us to feel condemnation. We don't, it's not that place of that, right? Like he doesn't want us with that feeling, but we should be turning from that. 
So then we're not doing it again. So I should be feeling sadness. I should be feeling remorseful, right? That I did these because these are real feelings. But I'm not going to stay in that, right? And let me tell you why we're not staying in that. Because we got a God who knows all things. So although we might feel regretful, although we may feel sad and disappointed and remorseful, right? 2 Corinthians 7 verses 10 says, speak about godly sorrow leading to repentance, which brings salvation without regret, okay? So it is important that we take that, we take that sin, we bring it to God, we ask for forgiveness, and then we receive, right, salvation from God, right? It brings about salvation without regret. So it's a, it's a transaction that happens. But how can that transaction happen if you're not regretful? If you're not regretful, how can that happen? Some of us, it's just putting a name to the action that we already do, right? Like some of us, I, I, when I tell you I know people and I love when I have this conversation with them and especially if when they're believers, because it's like, oh yeah, yeah I have tons of regrets. I have tons of things I regret. But I also serve a God that takes those regrets, right? Who takes those those sins, those places that I repent and ask for his forgiveness and he turns it into, it brings salvation without regret, right? Because it's through him. So Proverbs 28 verses 13 says, it suggests that hiding ones, that says, but in that scripture, it suggests that hiding ones sins leads to regret while confessing and forsaking them brings about mercy, right? So in the Bible, we see that we are to ask for forgiveness. We're to we're to make it known that we are sorry for that. We are asking for forgiveness for that. And not even just in that, we're to turn away from that, right? So it's good to regret. Who would have known? Who would have known it's good to regret? While we're on this journey of growing to get her, there's going to be a lot of space for error. It's true. But the way we stay aligned, one, is putting God at the head and also acknowledging regret when it is and turning from those ways, turning from those places that we can sometimes ignore because we, for people that are walking around with the mindset, like, I have no regret, then you're like, I have nothing to repent for. I'm not, like, I'm not sorry about that. I learned not to do it, but I'm not sorry I did it. That's not the, that's not the heart posture we should have the spiritual posture we should have when we're going to God. And, you know, and just also dealing with people like, I'm not going to lie to you. When I sit and have these conversations and I've had them over the years, naturally, I mean, so many conversations about like, oh, you know, you have any regrets, whatever. And somebody, and mind you, this is my feelings without even being able to say like, you know how you could feel something, you know something, but then it's like put it to terms and it's like you in a roundabout way, but not exactly. So like the definition of regret, it's like, yeah, feel sorry I've done something. That's really the way I I, I would have painted it, right? But not even knowing that it's directly related to repentance. But anytime I would have this conversation with somebody and if they have, if I felt like I was in a place of offense at one point with them or like they wronged me and they hear them say, they don't have regrets. How do you not have regrets? So you're just okay you did what you did or you didn't do what you did or that I was offended by your actions, which you own was wrong and you just don't have no regret off of that? No, I don't have any regret. That is crazy, okay? It is crazy. So again, it is so good to regret. But let's not stay in regret, okay? Let's take this moment to grow, y'all. Let's make this a growth moment for us. So let's grow. Let's ask God, one, to identify places that we, you know, that we need to repent. To soften our hearts and turn us away from the places and, and actions and thoughts that we need to repent from. We need to grow out of, right? Like we need, that regret needs to turn into the transaction that we can get salvation through God, right? Seek his mercy. I'm pulling up my notes, y'all. Yes, bring salvation without without regret, right? So we're talking about regret. If we're if our sins, right? If if we're not regretful, how can we confess our sins? How can we ask God for, for forgiveness? How can we seek forgiveness, forgiveness from him? And also grow out of that 
if we don't see anything wrong, if we just leave it at that, right? So in our growth moment, we're going to root ourselves in scripture. Um, 1 John verses 1 through 9 says, They say, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And that's what we want. We want to be cleansed, okay? We want to be cleansed. And how we serve such a great God. Like, he just doesn't miss. He just doesn't. He does not miss. And we're going to grow in that. We're going to grow in this place of realizing one, realizing that it's good to regret. Once we realize it's good to regret, we ask God to show us us, show us the error in our ways. And then we're going to seek, we're going to turn to him, confess it, seek it, and ask to be forgiven. And not stay in that, not stay in that place of condemnation and know that we are forgiven through Jesus Christ. And this is so important. If you were, if you checked out my last video, it talked about how, you know, basically like falling short. We were in the book of Samuel, um, first and second. And it's like, we fall short as humans. We are, we, we, we will and we are, and we do. But you have to know where you're rooted, right? We're putting root in the ground. You have to know where you're rooted to to even grow. If not, then you you won't you won't feed yourself what's needed to grow from this. So y'all, that's it for today. I love y'all dearly. I really do. I'm so grateful God has shared this growing together with me. And I pray to steward it well. And not only steward it well, but to also have a community of people that feel what God wants to be felt, that they grow from this. But I'm certain it will because it's from the Father. So however he sees fit right now is putting seed in the ground, getting enough out there that when whenever the time comes and and you know he sends this community that just gonna is gonna grow and just take off. I just know it's gonna be great. So I thank him in advance. But I love y'all. We're getting back to our weekly episodes dropping on Wednesdays at 11.30. So stay tuned and watch out for them. Until next time, bye-bye.